and what would happen if you woke up during surgery. Anesthesia nightmares and what to do to avoid them when we continue. With general, there's always a risk of, you know, something, you know, something could go wrong. Afterward, I was very groggy and uh, dozing in and out. You're in the operating room, and during the surgery, you wake up. It could happen. What you need to know before you have anesthesia when we continue. There is a risk to anesthesia. We all, we all are aware of that. And if somebody doesn't need an anesthetic, then I would not give it to them. Well, if you've ever been through a serious surgical procedure, chances are you were administered an anesthetic. But have you ever considered the risks of general anesthesia? There are things you should know before you go under the knife. Basically, I've had anesthesia um, five times in my life for surgeries. There's always a risk of, you know, something, you know, something could go wrong. Well, I was fearful, and um, he said to count to uh, five, and I got to three, I think, and then I felt nothing. These two New Yorkers are referring to their experiences undergoing surgery with general anesthesia, a numbing procedure where the patient is under a deep level of sedation. I wanted to um, go into local, but the type of surgery I had on my knee, I, he recommended that I go into the general. Coming out of it, I had like a bad reaction as far as feeling nauseous, stuff like that. I don't really like to be put out. It takes a while to come out of it. Anesthesia is also routinely used in many dental procedures. This man got a local anesthetic while he had his wisdom teeth extracted. You know, you feel like you don't know what's happening to your body. You obviously felt numb and uh, couldn't feel what was going on. Felt a little bit out of it. Dr. Louis Siegelman, a dental anesthesiologist in Manhattan, treats patients who have had past traumatic experiences in the dental chair. Many of his patients were fearful of going under. People do react differently to, uh, to anesthetic medications. Some people have a lower anesthetic requirement. Some people have a higher anesthetic requirement. There is a risk to anesthesia. We all, we all are aware of that. And if somebody doesn't need an anesthetic, then I would not give it to them. Well, joining me in studio this morning to continue the conversation is Dr. Kenneth Fries. He is an anesthesiologist at Nassau County Medical Center. I want to thank you very much for joining us this morning. Let's talk about what are my choices for anesthesia. Can I talk to my doctor beforehand and say, you know, what's best for me? Well, you certainly do have choices uh, depending on the type of surgery you have and, of course, depending on your specific medical condition. Just to go over them briefly, there is the general anesthetic, which is what most people are most familiar with. Mm -hmm. This is where you're put into a deep sleep and you have absolutely no idea what was happening. You wake up, the surgery is over. Uh, more popular now is a type of uh, anesthetic where the surgeon actually will usually put a local anesthetic. A local anesthetic is a drug like Novocaine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the drug that, uh, for instance, a dentist would put into your mouth to numb a tooth so you All wouldn't right. feel uh, what was happening. Uh, at the same time, the anesthesiologist gives you medications that calm you and take pain away and sort of titrate that, give you enough to really make it a very pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, there are uh, ways to actually numb nerves going to the area where you're going to have your surgery. Uh, the, if, for instance, if you're going to have your hand operated on, an injection can, of a Novocaine-type drug can be given to you in the armpit, numbs Ooh. the whole arm, and you don't have to go to sleep or you can be given something to make you and comfortable. And you can watch what's going on if you want. Let, let's move on quickly to the side effects of, of some of these drugs. What, what, what can a person expect? Well, first of all, I think it's, it's incredibly important to reassure people that anesthesia in 1997 is a very safe experience. Uh, if you go back 20 or 30 years, uh, the risk of an anesthesia, mm -hmm. a serious complication of mortality of death, could be as high as one in uh, 1,500, 2,000. We're talking now about a risk uh, less than one in 250,000. Uh, some studies have shown it's around one in 400,000. Mm -hmm. That makes driving your car uh, a significantly more risky experience than undergoing than anesthesia. Than undergoing anesthesia. So most people who have uh, negative experiences after anesthesia, it's minor problems. Mm -hmm. How problems do you we manage, can... since we're talking about after anesthesia, what about managing the pain? Okay. There have been tremendous advances in the last 10 or 15 years in managing post-operative pain. Two techniques that are used right now that are very popular and very effective are the uh, 
patient-controlled analgesia device. You mm -hmm. actually have a narcotic, usually morphine, put into a machine next to the bed. You're given a little button to mm. press, and you actually control how much anesthetic, how much uh, analgesic, I mean, how mm -hmm. much morphine to get and when you want it. Of course, the machine has a computer in it to make sure that you don't get too much I and make it say, yes, very you safe. You become very addicted to morphine. It, it, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you don't get addicted in, a sh in the short term, but the danger is you might get too much. You get and just And then get too you much can off. cause complications. So mm -hmm. it's done very safely. In addition, there is an excellent technique where a catheter, a little tube, is put in near your spinal cord. And if you have surgery, for instance, on the lower extremity, let's say a total knee replacement or something like that, uh, things like morphine can be given very slowly through that tube and give really okay. incredible pain relief. We're quickly running out of uh, time, but I do want to get this. What steps can I take to prepare myself for undergoing anesthesia? Okay. When you see your anesthesiologist prior to the surgery, really, you want to listen very closely. A lot of recommendations are going to be made to you that you have to follow very carefully. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things is to listen to the instructions about what you can eat and drink and when you have to stop taking food, okay. uh, what medications to take. Uh, if you have a medical condition, you'll probably, it'll probably be recommended that you go see your family doctor, whoever's treating you, mm -hmm. and get everything sort of tuned up and exactly, you know, in shape. Right. So you're the mm -hmm. best possible risk and you're the best possible shape to uh, undergo the stress. Okay. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but it is such a great topic, we will have to revisit it. Once again, Dr. Freeze, thank you so very much for being with thank us you. this morning. All right.